from Jonathan. He says, Dear Dr. Craig, in some of your debates and articles, you cite early sources that confirm the empty tomb, like 1 Corinthians 15, and a pre markan source in Mark's Passion narrative. In the book, The Death of the Messiah, compiled by Marion L. Swords, it lists about 35 scholars who grade what is authentic or not about chapters 14 and 15 in the early Mark source. Scholar O'Collins asserts, quoting, Chapters 16, 1 through 8 were not directly graded, but whereas many scholars accept in general that Mark drew on early written and or oral sources for his passion and resurrection narratives, any particular reconstructions of these sources remain at best tentative and do not command wide scholarly agreement. End of quote. I'm just wondering, what are the reasons why you use the pre markan account as an early source for the empty tomb? I think I remembered you saying it is within seven years of the crucifixion that this tradition formed. Thank you for all you do, Jonathan. If you look at the quotation from Gerald O'Collins, Kevin, I think that O'Collins is making the very point that I am trying to make in appealing to this pre-Markan passion story. The point is here that Mark didn't just sit down at his writing desk and compose the passion story of Jesus. Rather, Mark had an integrated running narrative of the Passion Week, which he used as a source in writing his story. And, as O'Collins notes, most scholars today agree with this. What the student missed is that what O'Collin said is any reconstruction of this source is controversial and not widely accepted. Ah. That is to say, did verse 5 of chapter 13 belong to the pre and Passion source? Did verses uh, 8 to 9 of chapter 14 belong to the Passion source? That's controversial. The attempts to reconstruct it, you see, in detail are controversial. But the fact that Mark was using and relied upon a pre markan passion story is one that is widely accepted by most scholars today. And in fact, because it goes back so early, it's probably based upon eyewitness testimony and is therefore a very valuable source of information. Now, it's interesting that O'Collin says in that quotation that the empty tomb story, that is to say, Mark uh, 16, verses 1 to 8, was not graded. It wasn't counted by these scholars, uh, or assessed, rather, by these scholars uh, in terms of its presence in the pre-Mark and Passion story. But what I argue is that the empty tomb account clearly was part of that pre-Mark and Passion source because it really isn't distinct from the burial narrative in chapter 15. They're tied together by grammatical and linguistic links. Some of the antecedents for the pronouns in the empty tomb story are back in the burial story, uh, so that they are grammatically linked together, and the vocabulary is the same. In fact, it really is one smooth-running narrative. So this pre and passion source, I think, extends all the way through the end of verse 8 of chapter 16, so that we are on very good historical ground here in dealing with the crucifixion, the burial in the tomb by Joseph of Arimathea, and the discovery of the empty tomb by the women. And that, by the way, is one reason that these literary construction theories offered by, for example, Richard Carrier and other internet infidel figures are simply untenable. They're, they're impossible because Mark didn't invent the narrative. It's not a Markan literary creation. It's something that Mark had before him that he used, and moreover, that uh, is found in sources that are independent in Luke and in Matthew and in John and other New Testament sources, so that this isn't just a literary creation of Mark. This represents a source that Mark used that goes right back to the very beginnings of the New Testament church. What do scholars call this source? The pre and Passion story. Okay. Because I've heard of Q, M... Right. Those uh, are different sources. The Q okay. would be a sayings source, sayings of Jesus. The M source is Matthew's special source. Matthew had huh. material 
that he didn't get from Mark. He, he used Mark, but he also had some material he didn't get from Mark, and that's just arbitrarily called M. But the pre-Mark and Passion story is the story of the last week of Jesus' life, his suffering and, and death and crucifixion and burial. And this is a smooth, continuous running narrative which stands apart from the rest of the Gospel of Mark, which tends to consist of disjointed, anecdotal stories about Jesus that are strung together like pearls on a string, rather than an integrated running narrative, the way this final passion account is. He says, uh, again, I think I remember you saying it is within seven years of the crucifixion that this tradition formed. Is, is that right? That was the date that was given to it by Rudolf Pesch. Um, James Crossley also dates this pre-Mark and Passion story extremely early. Uh, these are, of course, conjectural, but as Mark is the earliest of our Gospels, we do know that it goes back even earlier than that, and therefore represents, I think, a very primitive source.